Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us for yet another episode of Zach and I's financial series brought to you by Builder Trend. Um, Zach, how's it going? Are we ready to talk about receiving payments for our clients? Episode four, baby. We're really about to hit our stride right now. God, see, this is content that, again, I'd mentioned on a show before that this is just engaging in every sense of the word. This is on the edge of your seat, just chomping at the bit for more. And we're going to get too self congratulatory there, my friend. I don't know what yet. that means. What does that mean? Don't explain it. Let's jump don't into worry. this. Don't worry. Yeah. We have, uh, we have an agenda typed out for this one. What are we covering? Yeah. Let's talk about best practices for builder trend and recording payments. So, how do we, how do we address getting money into the system? Where should you put it? What do you do? What are your options? And then we do want to talk a little bit about a pro service that we offer at builder trend. You and I are consultants, one of our pro services. We have another one called WePay and using online payments through Builder Trend. So we'll kind of talk on that a little bit today and, and kind of weigh the cost versus the benefits that you get. So let's get into it. Now, every customer, this is one thing that I've always run into when I've been traveling with my customers. Remember, I'm an on-site consultant, so I've had a lot of conversations about how do I get paid? That's important sure. to these companies, right? It's a, that's what keeps the lights on, literally. Yeah, it's a big deal. Yeah. That's why they're a business. So yeah. the biggest thing that I think is the goal of using Builder Trend is actually getting your customers involved in that process. You have the schedule. You have your documentation. You have ways to delegate tasks. Well, who are you doing this for? It's for your customers. Right. And ultimately, a happy customer has the ability to generate more business for you. Correct. In modern day business, you have your search engine optimization. You want your Google hits to look good. You want, you want everything that you can do to have your company be represented in a positive way to the broader public. Builder Trend is a way to leverage that. You have a cutting edge piece of technology, everything online. They have the ability to log into it why shouldn't we also use that to help them be informed about where they're at financially with the contract? So sure. when, when I, whenever I'm talking about receiving payments, I'm always coming at it from a place of for your customer. Um, and, and some people, they don't have customers. They build specs. Well, you still might want to track kind of the overall final contract price of what you sold it for and be able to run some cool reporting inside of Builder Trend by tracking invoices and putting that information into your system post-sale. So even right. though this episode primarily is going to focus in on your traditional builder who has a client that they're doing work for, um, it can still apply to your spec operations and in bank draws and, and those other situations that are going through. Sure. So we're going to get more into that reporting in episode six. I know we're in episode four, but we got to keep you coming back, right? Have can't to. Just give it to you now. Well, and kind of just not to uh, not to stray too far from the path here, just a little addition. Oh, um, yeah. The bulk of everything you just mentioned is this is our client, or this is this is a feature or a pro serve, whatever bucket you want to put it in. This is functionality that provides our clients's clients or customers a better customer experience. Right. That's all this is. When you're looking at it, and like you kind of alluded to and touched on, Zach is historically in the construction industry is, you know, the, the person who wants the remodel done or who wants the new house built might have felt a little slighted or a little in the shadow with not as much communication or transparency from the contractor. That's no slight to the contractor, uh, but that's ultimately the void that Builder Trend is trying to, is trying to fill. Payments is going to be another one of those um, because again, whether you want them to see the full budget, portions of the budget, where they're at on the schedule, whatever the case is, um, we can at least provide an option for more transparency, a better customer experience, better SEO, better reviews, better word of mouth marketing, yeah. um, whatever the case is. And if you think about how the housing market is going to change, the population oh, who are mobile. buying new homes and how things are going, the people buying those homes are going to be more technologically advanced than they've been in the last 20, 30, 40 years. Obviously, as technology becomes more and more part of our day-to-day -day lives, we all live with our cell phones in our hands. We're all connected to the internet 24-7. Well, the younger generation are going to be the ones buying homes, and they're going to have an expectation and, and research that builder before they even go into the contract with that builder. They're a conversation for that right. matter. 
Yeah. So they're going to, you're going to be able to bring this up and say, you know, you already have apps for everything. You should have an app for your construction and we do building that into it. Right. Right. So that's kind of where we're coming from when we're talking about, you know, recording these payments and how do you go about doing it in the right way? It's a transparency thing. When your customer logs in, they're going to be able to see their job running total, which is contract amount plus any additional cost that maybe came up through a change order or maybe you're utilizing builder trend selections and the job running total and reflects that they've gone over their allowances. All that is in play here. And so at what point do you go about and actually request your money? Collect um, it. Yeah. yeah. So there are two ways to do that in builder trend. You can use a line item invoice going back to the running theme, what kind of inspired this conversation, Cash which code. is cost codes. You've built this structure on your estimate. You're using mm -hmm. those cost codes on your change orders. You're using those cost codes on your bills and POs. And now you can invoice off of those things. So you've utilized your specific things that you're using to build the house mm -hmm. or remodel the house. And now you're using those to inspire what your invoices are going to look like. Or you can do a flat fee invoice. So this would just be a lump sum with a general description of what you're requesting money for. Ultimately, that's up to you about how you want to look at it. I've seen really, really beautiful invoices that have lots of data points to it. This is how much we originally said. This is what we billed you for. This is the percentage left. Um, that's going to be handled better in QuickBooks off their invoicing operation, but you can get very close in Builder Trend to where you can track how much have I billed for already and how much this invoice is reflecting which specific items I've actually used in my program up until this point. Or maybe that's too much. Maybe you just want a general lump sum. That's fine. The cool thing about Builder Trend is you can still invoice off of different parts and then turn it into a flat fee so that the detail is still generic and just a request for a lump sum of money. So that's, that's the workflow we're working towards is I've done all the work. I've got my cost code set up. I've got my estimate in. I'm using change orders. Now I'm just taking that and I'm bringing it to its natural step, which is requesting for payments, requesting for money off of that. Nice. I'm just, I'm trying to think of a, of a situation to where it would be more advantageous to do flat fee as opposed to line item invoicing um, might not be the conversation for this though. Yeah. It, it just varies on the type on of operation and how you prefer it. Some people don't want to have a really detailed invoice because ultimately they signed a contract that here's what we're going to do. And here's when we're going to, you know, expect payment. And they're just a generic draw schedule. You have sure. that ability. Other people okay. have a really detailed line item estimate that lays out every cost and expense and, and they're trying to hit that target. And so for transparency purposes, they're going to invoice identically off of that estimate. Uh, some people have a hybrid, you know, where they do itemize it, but they're not, necessarily like doing a draw schedule they just sort of like 50 percent now and then final payment later that's a conversation for your company and your operations about your cash flow how do i when, when do i need my money that also impacts your tax payments as well when are you recognizing that revenue that's not really what builder trends trying to address we're just talking about why should you put this into builder trend what does it benefit and what is the functionality for you to be able to do that so the thing I want to point out more than anything is you can invoice off all these different pieces. So let's take your classic situation with, I've put my budget into builder trend, i.e. I've put my estimate. Well, sure. because that lays out my foundation of costs, this is what I'm expecting to receive with my markup and everything. I'm able to go to the estimate and use checked actions on the left-hand side and create an owner, an owner invoice right off of that estimate. Now I can track how much have I estimated, or excuse me, invoiced off of already, and how much percentage wise do I wanna call for this specific invoice um, and give me that exact amount. Again, going back to our QuickBooks amount or it, uh, QuickBooks conversation, excuse me, you're able to then throw that over into QuickBooks, receive your payment, and then update that payment back in Builder Trend as soon as you receive that money in your QuickBooks account. So that's the most traditional way that people are gonna use this. I have a budget, I'm gonna go invoice off of it, and then I'm gonna go get my money, update it, and it'll talk back. So you really have a good handle of kind of 
When can I expect things to be coming in? When was my payment actually made? And I don't need my accounting software at that point. Sure. But then there are some other situations where things will come into play. What about change orders? And this is a conversation I've had with a lot of people. You know, when I go to the store and I want to purchase something, I'm expected to pay up front, right? Right. Well, change orders in construction, a lot of times builders have floated the money for their customers. And even worse, sometimes these conversations are happening where it's just a handshake deal or, yep, we can do it. And they don't all the time. document all the time. All the I time. Was, I was at a builder that um, had a $50,000 change order miscommunicated. The builder ordered the materials and did the work. And they went to ask the customer for the money. And the customer said, I never approved this. And they fought them. And they ended up in litigation over this and ended up losing because they had nothing documented saying that, that this was the case. You hate, you hate to hear it, right? Well, Builder Trend opens up that avenue to where you don't have that miscommunication. Customer logs in, customer can see their contract, customer can see their job running total, customer can see their approved change orders. You have them sign off on it. The contract now reflects that pricing. There's not right. that confusion, that handshake. Is it a little bit more work to get those change orders documented because I know things can change so quickly? It is. Is that work potentially going to save you a $50,000 lawsuit? Maybe. That's definitely worth it. Sometimes that's the thing. Go yeah. ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Sorry. I'm rambling. Cut no, I just, that's, that's the thing that is just so bothersome to me is, is how many times can you as a business get burned by a handshake deal or, or a saying, yep, we'll do this change order. Yep. We'll do this upgrade. Yep. We'll do this. Client gets the bill at the end. They go, those look like some pretty heavy contractor fees. I'm not paying them. Right. Like we can't do anything about it now. Right now, now you're still either A, going to accept the loss because you didn't document it or B, it's the same conversation that we had on the podcast previous or to the series previous to this is yes, it might take you another 30 minutes, hour, whatever it is to draft up a change order. But when we're putting together a $400 a square foot home, $2 million home, $3 million, $5 million home, $500,000 home, how many times do you want to get burned on this? Yeah. Have the system in place. A, be able to track the invoicing off of it at certain steps and certain features and functionality in the program. Be able to do your checks and balances and have data behind your, your business decisions um, or the business making decisions. Yeah, I mean, documentation is security. And that's ultimately why you're putting yeah. a system in place to be able to easily document it. And, and like an example of change orders, like you're not going to put your estimate through your phone. Right. Like your change order, you're out on site, you're with the client. They Both say, together. you know, I'm think yeah, I'm thinking about having a, uh, upgrade on the countertop, you know, ballpark it, create the change order, have them approve it. Um, obviously you might want to get a bid, uh, but you can do that from your phone too and get a price or call your sub, get the number, then create it, have them sign off on your phone done. And, right. and you're just eliminating that potential variable. That's going to make you a lot more secure and how sure. you're running your operation. And I know things can change a lot and they can change quickly. And, it, and it's, there's, there's back and forth and all that. But there is always a cutoff point to say, okay, we've had these conversations. We need a signature in order for you to do things. That's the right way to do it. And there's something to be said about that. I hear it, I hear it all the time about, you know, you don't know this industry. You don't know, you know, what demographic we're in or what the reputation means to people and, and holding people to all these systems and processes. The, the beauty behind a system or a process is that it's at least there. Right. If it's not there, then you can't hold anyone accountable, whether that's yourself or a project manager or a client. Right. If we have the process in place, then we can at least decide what we do with it at that step. If we want to chase somebody for a $50,000 um, change order that we didn't collect on, but we want to save a reputation, we don't want to be known as the contractor that's taking our clients to court at least you have that option. Right. If you do want to take them to court, if you do want to take this to litigation, then you're not going to get hosed on or on uh, uh, attorney fees. You're not going to waste your time. It's not going to be the stress. You're just going to say, look, this is a situation. This is the agreement we had. This is what they wanted. I put it in. They're not paying for it. 
right? You're just, you're, you're setting yourself up. So for, for other areas of success, whether you yeah. use them or not. And it's a lot easier to be reactive than it is to be proactive, but entirely by being proactive, you're staving off a lot of headaches down the road on anything in building anything. and running a business. The more you can control what's happening, the better you're going to be. I, I remember a story as well. Another builder in Alabama I was working with who made up a great point. It really changed the way that I even looked at our own customers. She said, you know, for a long time, everything ran through one or two people. And, and we started to realize that a business is not, should not be dependent on one person. It should be dependent on a system. So that if that person ever leaves the company, for whatever build a reason, build a spot. You're not the the system does not collapse. Totally, it continues to run, and instead you're training someone how the system works, not having to find someone with the skill set that matches exactly what you looked at or what your previous employee looked at. Well, change order processes, having budgets and builder trend, being able to job cost and builder trend, all these topics we're going through is really trying to emphasize that main point that your company should not be reliant on a single owner single project manager, right? A department, it is an operation and those operations yes. should be interchangeable. And, and that's really what this is trying to highlight. Um, and your customers are part of that too. You, you set the expectation for them as well. There's always fear about using builder trends invoicing because like, they're going to see too much. You have control. And that, right. that also means you control what they can and can't see to a certain extent. So even if you're not showing them the job running total, if you're still putting your information for you as a record in Builder Trend, you know where to find it later down the line and to tell them this is where we're at. If it means you're creating a manual report for them, so be it. We're trying to make your life easier, but right. you can still do it, but it still needs to be somewhere. And you're already using Builder Trend for so many other things. It just makes sense to then move that into here as well. Right. So there's another piece to this too that we want to talk about. We mentioned that we have the ability to also request money um, through Builder Trend as well. So we have a partnership with Chase, Chase WePay. WePay was purchased by Chase, so it's part of their um, system. And they've really improved the setup to how this works. In the past, um, they did not use any sort of verification tool. Now they use a system called Plaid. And most major banks in the country works with Plaid. The setup for this is as little as three minutes, five minutes. Literally, it's... What is it, Zach? Is it three minutes or five minutes? I want to know. <laughs> well, I can do it, you know, in three minutes, but depending on your internet connection and, okay, you know, okay. you know cellular just, service, it could take a little bit longer, you know, get out there and make sure your, your bandwidth is good. Um, you literally log into your bank through WePay. It runs the verification, use the same password, says you're good to go. And now you can start hitting the pay online button through your invoices. Now, this is a really popular choice for people who do a lot of volume. I love it for change orders as well, because you know it just avoids that situation where you're not getting your money up front and you're not financing it on behalf of the client and then trying to get your money after the fact. So you control this per job. You can say this customer wants to use online payments. This customer doesn't. I think that's really important. It's not like you turn it on and everyone nice. is beholden to use this. Sure. It's in the owner setup, you go through your process, you activate them, you ask them, would you be comfortable using an online payment system that we use through Builder Trend? You can make your payments right here in Builder Trend to us. You can set up a payment method. Um, it takes very little time to actually set up. Um, it has credit cards and ACH. Hook your bank credit cards. Up. Yep. Uh, they accept all major credit cards, Visa, MasterCard, Discover, um, and uh, American Express. Um, with ACH, the transaction is 0.5% of the transaction with a $1.99 minimum and a $15 maximum. So that means if you receive money over $3,000, the maximum amount you're going to pay on that transaction is $15. Now that sounds hefty and I get this is the biggest hesitation with ACH payments is that that $15 fee, they start to add up. And there's no doubt that you're going to have to pay a little bit of extra money for the convenience, but then just take a step back and think about 
what are you actually getting by integrating this into your payment method? You're not having to chase customers down for money, right? They're filling it out on their online platform that you're already using. Bingo. Um, you're much easier. It's much easier to track where these payments are running um, rather than having to go into a different software in order to transact it or manage paper checks. Um, so just the, the actual mitigation of variables on that end, just the paperwork, right? is is eliminated um and ultimately uh this is something that is more and more common more people are using venmo using square using quickbooks online on. payments right this is this is people start to expect these online options um as a as a means to kind of get people to um integrate it into how they do things so the other cool thing is if you're a chase customer and, and nationally is obviously a large bank. It's same day transaction. So you can get your money that day. Um, if you are not a Chase customer, you still see an average time to flip of one to two days. So right. it's still a very fast service built into your transaction. The way it works with your QuickBooks is it literally creates the invoice. And then once you get your money, it just ties into that invoice and you're good. So your builder trend is updated at once as the QuickBooks invoices is updated. So now you're really eliminating double entry. You don't even have to go to your QuickBooks. It just kind of pulls it in, invoices paid, and, and away you go. Um, One thing I do want to add, if you're... Yeah. No, yeah, um, the, the whole thing that we're kind of tracking on here is, is our clients, CIS clients experience, right? This is all about customer experience for our clients' uh, uh, clients, at the end of the day, what this is going to be offering them is, is that convenience factor, is that same day. But also, you're going to be offering a more efficient project. You're able to come in on time under budget. A lot of what our clients are doing, though, is they are rolling those fees over into their actual client's estimate, mm -hmm. bill, yeah. whatever, as an yep. IT fee or a software fee or whatever the case is. And when you are onboarding them and you are discussing these options and you are saying, do you want to use online payments? Then that's going to be a conversation that we have to be had. That's an easy selling point, right? If, if this is going to be, you know, we're going to be able to finish your house much more effectively because we're able to get paid. We don't have to wait on this. We can deliver product X, Y, Z. Um, it's, it's all about your client's experience. Yeah. And this is just another one of those features that's going to make it easier for them, easier for you, roll the, roll the fee over to them or you take care of it. Um, there's a couple of different ways you can approach it. Um, but yeah. I wanted to throw that in there because that's the bulk of this whole conversation is, is making it easier for our clients' as clients. That's a great point. One of the other cool things is the limits on these transactions are sky high. In fact, I think it's as high as 500,000 per transaction to start. So you know, you can really transact quite a bit of money because it, it, we pay has cut a deal with our nature of a construction business um, sure. to, to have much higher transaction volumes than you would see with a lot of other vendors who offer these types of services. So that's something to consider. Um, and, and we also offer credit cards and that's a way people will kind of leverage getting money quicker at least, you know, and say, hey, we charge 2.95% on a Visa purchase uh, but if you want to give us cash, we'll waive that. And and you can kind of use that to get your money a little bit quicker as well, like on a change order situation. So you can get pretty creative uh, as far as how you leverage receivables and, and cash flow by using these online payment options as a way to kind of encourage people to pay quicker uh, in the long run. Totally. So, you know, if you have questions about this, highly recommend that you reach Call out them. to uh, our, our payment consultants um, in our, our uh, customer success operation. We have people on the phone who are, are able to speak to this to more detail and help you get set up. Um, but it is a really great feature that I think a lot of people are hesitant to try. Um, think about the long-term benefits and what you get and, and see where that goes and where it takes you, right? So this, this one today is a little shorter um, as far as the content, but we're excited to talk about the next topic, which is job costing and the, the powerful features that come along with this. One thing to point out is if you've been listening to this and you're not using Builder Trends Pro package, um, this is a great way to preview kind of what you can do with our pro features. We're going to talk about the purchase order system, 
uh, everything up into this point kind of applied to all users. The next few episodes are going to be uh, diving into those deep features that you can kind of unlock once you actually kind of decide to go all in on Builder Trend. Love it. Yep. I'm Anything excited. To add there, I have I have very very little to add. Um, this I like that this was short and sweet, very informative. Um, job costing is going to be a big piece, like you'd mentioned with the pro, um, but also with the uh, QuickBooks integration. For sure. Job costing, or uh, Costco's rather. This could be good. So we'll uh, we'll sign off here, and uh, we'll talk to you on the next one. Thanks, Thanks guys. Guys. Hello everyone. Thank you for joining Builder Trends Financial Series. If you would like to learn more about Builder Trend's financial features, don't hesitate to reach out to your customer support team at Builder Trend. If you would like one of Builder Trend's consultants to assist you in implementing what Zach and I have discussed, please reach out to financial consulting at buildertrend.com.